Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another special edition of the show. I've got a couple gentlemen here. Uh, we're going to be talking about, we say Genevieve, uh, or Jennifer. We're going to learn how to pronounce it properly in Dutch. Um, so we're going to learn about some uh, Genevieve here and, and what it's, with what, how it originated and what it became later on and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've got you and Sander here, yep. um, and uh, and you're with, uh, what was the, the parent company, Jans Jansen? No. Sorry? The, the parent company. Of? The company you're with. Oh, from me? <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm a producer. Okay. Um, I'm from Hoghout. Okay, got it. The Borgen brand. And you can... I work for the uh, uh, trade association Spirits and L. Got it. Okay. Very nice. So, um, so we we're talking about uh, this cool spirit here. I haven't had a lot of it in, in the past. I think I've maybe have had this one once um, where I worked it before. Um, so I'm excited to really try this expression uh, of, a, of a spirit. And um, I leave it up to you, gentlemen. So you, 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 whoever wants to start first, kind of tell um, us who you are and how you got into all this. Yeah, cool. Um, so I work for a distillery in the north of the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Hoghout. Um, we are producing uh, the De Borgen range and we are part of the consortium which was set up by Spirits NL to promote Geneva in the US okay. as a category because uh, it used to be a huge category in the past um, and we are trying to reinstate that okay. in the market. Very nice. Now for you. Uh, I've been working for the Spirits uh, Trade Association since 2004, so um, I might consider myself a bit of a veteran uh, when it comes to representing the uh, spirits industry. And this was a program which which came on our path, uh, actually uh, helped by uh, by Hoghout that there were possibilities to uh, to have this promotion campaign here in the U.S. Um, and that's what we uh, we trying to organize and uh, trying to get all these these brands together because um, okay. that would be our role because they're all members of my uh, my organization um, and we're responsible for uh, making sure this is all uh, uh, working well uh, without stepping into the commercial aspects which is left to the brands. Okay, so give us a little history of what this is because uh, um, I'm sure since most of my viewers are wine people you know, we they may not know what, what Geneva is. Right. Geneva. So, first of all, how is it pronounced in Dutch? Geneva. Geneva. Like, I kept butchering it. So. <laughs> yeah. um, no, but it, it, it's interesting to me. It's, it, the spirit is over 400 years old. Mm -hmm. um, even though to a lot of people it's 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 new, right? Um, and um, a lot of people actually ask, saying, "Okay, where do you actually place it? What kind of a product is it?" Um, some people tend to know a little bit about saying, "Hey, it's some kind of predecessor of gin," um, but that's usually where it where it ends. And and I always explain in a way saying, "The initial Genevers back in the 16th century were basically new make whiskey." flavored with botanicals. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where you actually see the basis of a Geneva, which is a grain distillate malt spirit, if you will, um, flavored with botanicals. Okay. And throughout the years, um, processes process became more refined. Uh, the taste profiles become more balanced and everything. And also when uh, neutral grain spirit comes into play, we start mixing that in the liquid as well. So you get different variety and styles of product, uh, all the way down to almost a whiskey, flavored with botanicals, okay. to almost a gin, with a little bit of uh, maltiness to it. Okay. So it's got a botanical array of a gin, because well, gin was born out of Geneva, mm -hmm. as you might know, and it's got the graininess from the whiskey side, and it's actually the category right in between, it's the missing category in between whiskey and gin, and that's also why it becomes really in interesting also for the bartenders because it's just uh, they just lacking this this product in their back bar okay so this is not something that like people should think of just a different gin it, it's it's really there's a 
No. There's a really different flavor profile going on yeah. here. Sure. Okay. And that's that's and that's exactly what you're saying. I mean, people, uh, it's not a ginish kind of thing or a gin from the Netherlands because it's definitely a completely different product. Okay. Um, and the <clears throat> is is the lead botanical juniper, um, or is it just one of the botanicals that's really going to be in there? Kind of like gin doesn't um, have to be the lead; it just has to be somewhere in there. It has to be definitely in there. It, it has to be uh, in, uh, in 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 Geneva. Um, I mean, being Dutch, that's an obvious thing because the Dutch word for juniper is Geneva. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so Geneva and juniper is uh, is the uh, mandatory uh, ingredient, and and so is the uh, the malt spirits. Okay. Bo both elements should be uh, there, and then of course the uh, botanicals. But that's not descriptive. That's that's more botanicals in general. Right. Um, so these three elements make up uh, Geneva. Okay. Is there a minimum percentage of juniper that has to be in it, or is just 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 like gin? It just it, has to be in there, even it, at the smallest amount. It it has to be in it, okay. but it has to be discerned. Okay. So, at some point, you need to bring in uh, juniper berries, and uh, and 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 it, it has to be discernible. Okay. Otherwise, it can't be called uh, uh, Geneva. Okay. Very nice. So, uh, we've got a range of of um, uh, brands here. So, um, shall we kind of go through? Yeah. Go through the brands and, yeah. and who they are, and maybe some histories with them. Yeah. So, um, you've got a range of brands over over here where they're all Geneva's, uh, but they're all vastly different from each other, uh, partly by style, but definitely also by taste, taste profile. And that's what makes Geneva so unique, uh, that you got so much uh, dif different parts to play with for uh, the product. You got, uh, first of all, your alcohol component, which you can, make, it's basically like a blended whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, and you can play around with with that, a lot of malt spirit, not a lot of malt uh, malt spirit, and that defines different types of Geneva. Okay. Uh, but it's a pretty technical thing. Um, and that's the first part. Then the second part, you have all the botanicals, where you can play around with either in distilled form shape or uh, macerations or whatever you want, depending on what kind of a taste you want. And uh, you combine that, and then you can even uh, decide, saying, okay, I'm going to age the whole product in barrels or right. for example also at the beginning with the alcohol blend you can use unaged or aged stuff just okay. everything just to add taste to it um, and what you see over here is actually a um, an overview of various different uh, products so these two are um, in the younger style Geneva so the new style Geneva which is a more milder, more neutral profile, um, uh, up to 15% malt, uh, malt spirit, so it's pretty neutral okay. um, and uh, very delicate. Then you've got uh, uh, more the old style Geneva's, which is a higher malt spirit content, uh, all the way down to a, uh, you can go all the way to a, a malt Geneva, which is even more grain Okay. more malt spirit, all the way down to 100% malt Geneva, uh, which is basically whiskey flavored with botanicals. Okay. If you want to relate that to uh, a, um, a category. Okay. Um, so we can try with uh, with the first one, which is the, the, the Smeets. Okay. And um, mm -hmm. uh, what you will notice that um, even though it's only got like a few percent malt spirit, there you go. go. Um, it's got a very full profile, it's got a lot of graininess to it, but yet delicate in there. Uh, you can really taste a nice balance of the botanicals. And technically, I mean, if you would taste it, and it's interesting to hear your view on this, would you, ta if you taste it, would you think this would be a gin or not? The, even though it's not a lot of maltiness, mm -hmm. a lot of malt, it's in there. Yeah. So it's almost like a sweet like a sweetness to it. So I would think it was like a sweet gin mm -hmm. somehow that they, I don't know what they did to it, you know, but I wouldn't necessarily not being familiar with the category itself. I probably wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. Um, but understanding that you've got a little bit of malt in there, um, that it's, it's that sweetness is coming through, but the botanicals, the juniper is coming through. So it is, it is, you know, noticeable. Uh, yeah. It should yeah. be. So, yeah. Yeah, it must um, be. but I mean, it's really pleasant. Um, you know, the, I mean, yesterday I, I interviewed a gentleman with, um, um, no, two days ago, uh, with Hendrix. So yeah. I got to try some Hendrix gin, and well, I've had Hendrix itself, but he he had uh, I tried his their new gin they have coming out. Right. Um, so that was interesting, and you know, then today we well, was talking about the French seventy five stuff. You know, they're using they're using a gin with that. Um, so gin for me, 
as a, as a gener generic category is something that I've been uh, getting uh, more and more used to and more and more appreciative of. Um, I, I think a lot of people, not just gin, but some, some categories of alcohol, the first time they ever have it, they didn't like it. Yeah, and yeah. that was gin, that was, that was with gin. But the, coming to this conference these few years, I, I make myself go try gin because I know there's good gin out there. And, right. and I mean, I, I like whiskeys and scotches and, and bourbons. Vodka to me is vodka. I mean, I know there's some differences, you know, depending on how pure your water is and, mm -hmm. and all that and just and how much you dist distill it. But to me, it's just really a, a, a base spirit just to deliver some other flavors to because yeah. it's yep. neutral, usually it neutral. Must be. Um, and, uh, you know, but gin is fascinating because, um, I mean, scotches and, and, and whiskeys, they have some complexities to it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of their complexities are coming from the barrel yep. um, yeah. and how it's aged. Whereas with gin, it's... I don't want to equate it to wine too much, but you know the the botanicals. You know you're you're adding all those complexities into the spirit itself without really using the, the barrel aging. So mm -hmm. it's, I guess it'd be the closest to like a white wine that's aged in stainless steel rather than mm -hmm. oak. Um, and the, each individual grapes flavor profiles are coming through on on the fermentation process. The role so of would, the master distiller is different yeah. for, I mean, gins and Genevas. You have to create, you have recipes. Yeah. And you don't work with a recipe, you work with ingredients for uh, for uh, rums on, and, and uh, especially for uh, for whiskeys, there, there it's the influence of the barrels, which mm -hmm. is very decisive and also what you put in the barrels, of course. But these products are, I mean, sort of engineered. Yeah. Uh, you get different recipes and, and every time the role of the master distiller in, in, in making the recipe ends up with a different product. Yeah. yeah. I think I think there's a, I think there's a there's a little more craft involved in, in this kind of product, whether it's this or gin. Yeah. The that idea of of creating that recipe of your botanicals and then whether you're gonna macerate it or put it in the basket or both, yeah. you know, if you're gonna, and how you mix that up together. Um, it's you know, um, it's very fascinating, and I've been growing to like this style of um, uh, of spirit over the past few years because mm -hmm. I, I find that there's there's a complexity to it that you miss from other liquors, other yeah. spirits. You know, no, and it's it's a it's a really rich um, uh, um, category mm -hmm. because you can play around with so many parts. I mean. All the disciplines you have from um, uh, uh, malt spirit or, or uh, grain distillates, mm -hmm. GNS, aging, botanicals, um, uh, all that kind of stuff combined. Uh, and some other categories have a bit of that. Whiskey's got the grain, mm -hmm. barrel, that combination. Uh, gin clearly has got GNS, botanical combinations. And we can actually use everything. Yeah. And that makes it really interesting. It makes it also a challenge to explain people what it is, uh, because there's so many varieties. So there are different styles, like young style, or new style, old style, malt Geneva, 100% malt Geneva. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but within the, each subcategory, uh, there's also quite a lot of difference in in what the master distiller chooses to make his product. Okay. And, uh, and and you will notice it when you're tasting the other ones as well. So this is a very um, uh, accessible, uh, mild, more cleaner kind of expression. Um, and would this be something, I mean, you could drink this straight, but would this be something that would be a good base spirit for a cocktail? Um, yeah, well, a, a big chunk of um, uh, our consumption in the Netherlands is straight. Okay. Um, and a lot of the younger styles or the more neutral neutral styles. Um, and yeah, it will go well in, in milder cocktails, these, these younger, young, the, the, the new style Genevers. Hmm. Um, so what you're tasting now, that's also a new style. So it's got a, um, a modest percentage of malt spirit in there. Yeah, I think it's only 4% of uh, malt spirit in, okay. um, in it. But there you will notice that the botanical ray is way, way more yeah. powerful. Yeah, and it's, there's a lot of, like, a, like, a, like a lot of spearmint type. It's almost like having a spearmint gum in right. your mouth. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's very, very minty. expressive. It's very minty, it's very expressive, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's on the nose, it's, it's more expressive than, than this one. Um, it also feels like it might be a little, I don't know if it's a higher proof, I don't know if they're all the same proof, but it feels like it's a little bit higher proof. No, this, this, this one is 38 
pretend to yeah, 30, yeah. maybe the other one is 35. 35 so yeah it's yeah. a little bit i mean it's it's it's, it's indeed increased higher, higher i'm higher. not that great at figuring that three percent is not <laughs> like <laughs> uh, you're a connoisseur <laughs> well i mean in wine three percent is a big uh, thing yeah uh, but it's spirits i i i couldn't i i'm not no, trying, I'm not trying to toot my own horn on that one but it, but but it's a little it's a little bit hotter you know yeah. it's a little bit it's a little bit hotter but i think also the mint minty quality um um, accentuates that mm -hmm. it's just like in in wine certain flavors can accentuate um alcohol right. i mean i've i've had wines that are 15.5 percent alcohol and you would never know it and then mm -hmm. you taste the wine that's 14 percent alcohol and it tastes really hot right you know and you know there's lots of factors why but you know um just because it's higher alcohol doesn't mean you, you always taste it yeah no, that's, uh, but this, this one is, is is not very modest in its yeah. taste it's it's very expressive uh has a crispiness to it. Yeah, this it's like a it's like a freshness to it. It's almost like a, a spring type of of um, of a I don't know a feeling to it. Yeah, I think it has lemongrass. Yeah, it's 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 definitely got uh, uh, lemongrass and yeah. some other. Yeah, um, I think it's some Indonesian yeah. botanicals in there as well. Yeah, um, so both a new style Geneva, so okay. modest in their uh, grain disc portion or their malt spirit portion, but both com fairly different from each other. So if you move down to like the older style, so the more uh, uh, malt spirit in there, okay, I will have you taste some old Simon of Rutte, and mm -hmm. there you will see that, or will notice that you will have um, all of a sudden, a quite a different taste profile to start from. So first on the nose, it's a little more closed. Like I don't really, it's not really as 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 uh, expressive as the other two. Um, but there's like, but the, there's the maltiness comes through a little bit, yeah. and then that's what you get the most of is, is the malt. I don't really get a lot of anything else on on the on the nose. And I'm pretty. I'm not. I'm not stopped up. So. <laughs> Look, mom. <laughs> that's a, no hands. No hands. That's that's for the whole slurping <laughs> thing. It's, uh, oh, you are you supposed to like? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, it's the thing in Netherlands. If you if you order a Geneva in the Netherlands, you uh, will get it all the way down to uh, the rim. Okay. And then they pour a little more that you get like this little dome on top right, of it. Yeah. And as soon as you touch it, it will spill. So um, so what you do is actually slurp the initial part out. Got it. As 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 an as an um, um, uh, a gimmick kind of thing. Okay. Uh, and uh, and yeah, you can put your that's, hands behind your that's, back that's, and that's say, hey, look, I'm on. No, I'm on. <laughs> So if you compare this one to the to the other one, yeah, would you feel that that there's a big difference? There's definitely a difference. Um, it, it's to me that the malt is the predominant uh, flavor on right. it, um, and there's a there's a little touch of mint to it, um, uh, and a um, little more earthy yeah. quality to it um, mm -hmm. versus like this is really bright. Um, bright minty where this is more earthy minty um with with a touch more malt on it right um and this one's just like just like totally clean yeah so i mean we're obviously going you know in a, in a certain direction yeah. Yeah, yeah you know a little bit a little bit heavier um not as hot uh, as far as alcohol wise it might be higher proof who knows but yeah um, um this one the alcohol comes through more than than the other two but um yeah it but it's 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 very subtle like this is more of a subtle for me on the palate than than uh, the second one. The second one is really in your face. Yeah, you know? and this one is more like a, the classical approach. Okay. I mean, the second one is pretty contemporary uh, in in the usage of their botanicals, um, and this is a more classic old style Geneva. Um, and there's there's like, um, I feel it's like a little touch of like pine, almost like and, and somewhat. Christmassy, I guess. Right. Yeah, like like a little bit of pine to it. So hmm. you know, and it's all subtle. It's yeah. very subtle. So cool. yeah, it's yeah. Nice. it's pleasant. It's like this is like I could totally just like kick back and just drink it and just like just kind of chill. Yeah. Um, 
and it's not it's not hitting me in the face. It's not it's not it's not saying pay attention to me. Right. Um, it's like you know a good buddy's just kind of hanging out with you. Where this one is like, look at me, look mom, look mom, right? Exactly. And this one's a little bit. This one's just a little bit more subtle. Than than this one, mm -hmm. but it, it's kind of like it, it's definitely you notice it, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So next one up is the Borgen. Okay, uh, also an old style Geneva, um, and um, as I mentioned, you can for your whole alcohol um, composition, you can okay. use malt spirit versus neutral grain spirit and within the malt spirit you can also choose either to go for unaged or aged okay in this case it's a combination of uh, partly unaged malt spirit and 17 years aged malt uh, spirit it's from that point um, and then clearly it's got juniper berry in there it's got right. some other botanicals just to round round it off it's also an old style geneva but yet again if you compare them to the uh, right. rutte uh, a different approach so there's like a, a tangerine orange uh, component coming through, a little, a little like orange blossom, a little floral, you yeah. know, just botanicals. But you know, <laughs> um, but there's there's a more floral component, right. and then I'm imagining that the color is from the aging. Yeah. So it doesn't. And also from from um, uh, from macerations. Oh, from the maceration. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And so um, it doesn't seem like it it gets a ton of color from the aging. So it was like a 17 years. 17 years aged. So yes. are you on, using on sherry cask? Okay. Yeah. Got it. So you already use cask. Um, so it's it. So the, the color has already been leached. Most of the color has been leached out of the barrel from from the sherry. Yeah. Already. Okay. It's nice, and yeah, the citrus to me the citrus comes through quite a bit. Yeah, it's it's almost like a Grammarnier cognac, uh, not cognac, Grammarnier Cointreau. There's there's not a predominance of orange, but it's no. like like a little like mm. little spritz of orange in there, a little right. bit of citrus, a tangerine. Um, you will notice. Yeah. I mean, it's way more grainy than, for yeah. example, the first the malt, one. Yeah, the malt is coming through. There's yeah. the, the, it's it tastes sweeter. Um, so, distillation pretty much strips all the sugar out. So anything I'm getting is really just the flavors, or maybe from the maybe from the oak, you might be getting as well. Yeah, you might be getting yeah. some some and also, wood sugars. And also partly on the on the uh, botanicals. I mean, mm -hmm. if you if you use for example star anise or you use fennel or whatever it is, right? Yeah, uh, that will definitely add also to uh, the sweetness. Uh, in this case, oloroso sherry mm -hmm. also does it. Thing. Yeah, it's going to get a little bit of that in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I can I can see that it, it there's not a ton of any nuttiness that would come for me from from the sherry. Mm -hmm. um, but and, and maybe it's just because I know it's coming from sherry um, that there is a, a bit of lift that is kind of like a salinity. Um, so you know, um, I mean, since Hedes is based on the coast, um, yeah. you know, sometimes you can get some salinity in sherries, mm. um, depending on the type of sherry that you're talking about. It can be right. very, very salty, um, but there's there's a lift to it, there's a brightness to it. Um, so that either, that could be coming from the botanicals, could be coming from the, the, the sherry casks, yeah. but there's a, there's a little bit of lift to it. And I, I don't want to say salinity, but there's like a, you know, there's a lift I think is probably the best way to describe it. Right. Yeah. No, and, and I mean, again, uh, it, all the producers, I mean, they definitely know their way in 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 getting the best flavors from from peels, spices, fruits, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Because I mean, uh, uh, a lot of these guys have been around since like 16th, 17th century, and uh, we as Geneva producers have always been able to grab the best tastes from it and compose a a a well balanced liquid from it. Right. So there's a lot of um, uh, skill, there's a lot of expertise, uh, knowledge. Uh, to create a balanced and balanced product. Yeah. And um, and if, if for example, if you, I'll let you taste this one as well. Uh, right. Again, this is an old style Geneva. Uh, it's got a very high portion of malt, uh, malt spirit. Okay. Um, and okay. there you will also see that that uh, if you have the balance right, even though you've got like a high 
volume of 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 of, of mulch but you get a very nice balanced out product I think this is all, um, this is a, um, uh, a mesh bill of wheat, rye and corn, which is, which is uh, used more often in, in Geneva, I have to say. Okay. Um, and this one's just like, just smooth. Mm -hmm. Like, like we were getting more and more like, I want to say complex, but, but more flavorful. Yeah. And this one kind of pulls it back a little bit. Um, there's... Again, the maltiness has, has you know, so you have, the, you have the sweetness from the maltiness, um, but it's like, it feels like it's, you know, it's a, it kind of pulled back a little bit. And again, just another one where you just kind of kick back, relax, <laughs> sip on it. You're not, you're not trying to be, you're not trying to be too complicated, you know, you know, and then sometimes like on the, in the wine world, you don't need a complicated wine, you know, mm -hmm. you just want something that's easy, not easy, but just pleasant and you can relax with, and you can think about it, but you're not like, you're not trying to like delve deep into like, you know, the 500 billion aromas and scents and then the taste you're getting out of it. It's just like, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of clean, you know? Yeah. And there's, there's okay. like a, there's yeah. like a, um, like a white flower on, on, on the nose. Um, uh, Germanian, something like that. I think something like that. Um, uh, -huh. uh I wasn't really say a honeysuckle, but there's like a, there's a white floral component to it. And there's, and it's, it's opening up a little bit more uh, for me on the nose before I really, all I got was like the maltiness out of it. And now there's the, the, the white flower type of thing is coming through. Orange blossom. There's, yeah, gets to some more orange. So I don't know, maybe just, I, I'm not really hundred percent familiar with, with liquors that have aromas if it's like wine as it gets more oxygen in there mm -hmm. i mean i don't see people swirling their their liquors yeah. as a oxygen in it, but i don't know if, if that's something where now that it's has some oxygen in it, it's 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 releasing it a little bit more for me on on the on the nose yeah could be i mean th th there's so much stuff going on um uh from 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 all these different components um that's that if you if you taste you would always taste something something different in a way I mean, yeah there's, a, there's there's a lot to experience in a geneva yeah and there's there's a, a a fruit a fruitiness coming through like it's like this one was you know all about the spearmint and you know, yeah. like spearmint gum and this really is like spearmint gum like you know wrigley spearmint gum this one is i, I don't really want to use this this analogy because it, it doesn't it doesn't really truly describe it, and it's a bad description, but kind of like a juicy fruit gum. I don't know if you ever had juicy fruit gum from here, from Wrigley. Nope. But there's it's a it's a it's it's very very sweet, but it's, it's like a bunch of just fruit fruit in it. Um, and this it reminds me of that. It's kind of like that distant memory. Mm. You're like yeah, it's a little bit, but it's it's not like it's, it's, it doesn't really taste like that. That's why I don't really want to call it that. But there's a but there's like a like a mixture of of like a fruit cocktail almost type of thing on, on the palate. No, I basically mean this, this just this just shows case uh, a some of the varieties you you mm -hmm. have uh, clearly you also have a uh, uh, a mold Geneva which is even higher right amount of mold spirit in there and even all the way down to a hundred percent mold uh, uh, mold Geneva right for example the um, uh, notars brand which is also part of this this uh, this uh, group um, well, that's basically a common a blended whiskey yeah with 10 year olds and 15 year olds okay and flavored with botanicals so you get from almost to uh, uh, from the gin and entry all the way down to almost from the whiskey entry and and um, and I think there's a lot of uh, opportunity for us to um, to use this to 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 showcase the broadness and and, and the, the uh, the, the the interesting uh, um, uh, flavors of, right. of of Geneva's, and again, I'm saying okay, but how do I do I use it in the Netherlands? A lot of people drink it neat. Okay, um, that was the usual way of of uh, drinking it. Uh, clearly, with all these brands which are now coming into the market, Bols has been in the market for a while. Rut is already in the market. Uh, the Borgen is making his his uh, his, his moves, but so is Bobby's and Smeets also working on it. Um, Cocktail, definitely. Um, 
quite a lot of initial cocktails, uh, which are now made with gin, were mm -hmm. written down with Geneva, which is interesting. Uh, John Collins was with Geneva. Okay. Uh, Holland Gin Cocktail, the name already mentions it, uh, was made with Geneva, Martinez, uh, Juleps, uh, Gin Smash, that kind of stuff. Um, and it just gives bartenders the tool to really recreate those initial right. cocktails. Um, so that's definitely a, a, a way to go. Um, look at it, especially on the more grainier side of the Geneva's uh, as an uh, addition to uh, your creative set for whiskey cocktails. Um, on the other end, young style Geneva's, etc. Uh, see it as a great addition to the gin side. Okay. and make it more historically sound, if you will. Right. Um, and all the way down to Boilermaker style. Okay. Pair it with beers. That's that's what we do a lot also in the okay. Netherlands. Uh, pair you it. guys have a lot of beer there, so. <laughs> <laughs> so why not Plenty. Why not right. combine it? Right, yeah. Um, and, uh, and that also works really, really well. So there's various angles you can, you can, you can go in trying to use this, this uh, in using this product. And uh, yeah, it's really exciting to see also reactions in the market. Right. Uh, people are really interested in it. Uh, clearly, we've got a, a lot to educate and to explain. Uh, but I mean, the initial responses we have so far, we've now like been there around like for half a year pushing the category. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And a little longer, yeah. Yeah. No, I think we started in first uh, TOTC it was in July. It was July. Yeah. July. Um, and it's all been really, really positive. So, and, and honestly, believe me, knowing that a lot of people are so into, I mean, gin clearly became rather big globally. Uh, people are checking into gin, what's the historic background, right. and they stumble into Geneva mm -hmm. um, as the predecessor of gin. And at the same time, a lot of people are searching for new products and uh, new exciting things. Right. And yeah. uh, so I think it's, it's a really good time to really push this category. Yeah. So um, something like this, um, because of the barrel aging, you you could say that this is something that uh, somebody who is a whiskey drinker, uh, whatever, whisk, whatever part of the whiskey category is kind of a good gateway to get them into this. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually had this uh, this week people make old fashions with this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and, about, that was kind of going that direction. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's really nice. I mean, if you, if you take a Boulevardier and you take a good, uh, nice, multi- taste like grainy tasting Geneva in there. Okay. It's really cool. Yeah. And it just gives me a little bit of a more friendlier friendlier take. But I the, would say, yeah. The composition for, is really nice. For a Boulevardier, I mean, I feel like the scotch, the whiskey in that just sometimes is a little too harsh. Yeah. But this is this is a this is lighter. I think this would be a great this particular one yeah. would be a great um, substitute for that. Because it, 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 you still have that, you saw it, and there's a little bit of caramel I got again, Just I just got when I, when I uh, tasted it. Mm -hmm. So you still get some of those, you know, whiskey characteristics, yeah. but it's, it's it's more subtle, it's not, it's in your face, it's not like, you know, I mean, cocktails are all about balance, you know, we, we like to talk about balance in wine, yeah. um, but cocktails, it's, it's supremely important that your, your spirit and your... If there is a mixer involved and you're, you know, and your ice or water and any bitter or sugar, you know, old fashioned. <laughs> um, anyway, um, I know more than wine, um, <laughs> but that balance is very, very important. And, you know, I, I kind of feel like in, maybe I just not had really great Boulevardiers, but I just kind of feel like the, the spirit just really is too far in the forefront for me. Yeah. Um, I, but this I can see substituting that. Uh -huh. um, with that, and then with um, with an old fashioned or a Manhattan, um, I think you know with the orange botanical, with the orange the orange quality to it. I mean, it, mm -hmm. especially with with the uh, with the Manhattan, you you can really enhance that. And I think it would, I think it'd be great in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and, and and that's and that's that's getting into from getting into the the, the category from the whiskey mm -hmm. side of things. At the same time, if you go from the gin uh, um, uh, point. Um, if you, I mean, Negronis are huge and yeah. they'll do it with gin. If you, then again, I mean, you end up at the exact same point as where you have right. the entry point from a boule, uh, boulevardier, but. Um, yeah, because they're, they're, they're basically the same drink, just a, yeah. just a exactly. different base spirit, yeah. Um, uh, but it's cool to be able to have people from those different camps, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, allowing to get into the world of Geneva 
uh, and really um, start uh, to to taste what it is. Yeah. And uh, and there are numerous cocktails that you can actually. I mean, a Martinez will probably be one of the most versatile Geneva cocktails around. Uh, works really well with a very broad set of Genevers. Okay. Uh, really nice. I could see, like, I'm really not a fan. I'm like the one sommelier that really doesn't like Negronis. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the joke is with psalms, you're drinking wine all day, and at the end of the day, you want something bitter to drink. So you either drink a Negroni or you drink an IPA. Right. I like IPAs. Negronis, we're usually not my best friends. Now, I had, the one time I had a Negroni that I really liked, it was at a, a conference I go to every year in Dallas, uh, tex, the Texas Sommelier Conference, Texom, and um, they batch they batched their Negronis. Mm -hmm. So they had time to kind of integrate. When it's just like mm. made straight, yeah. you know, the, the, the flavors haven't integrated. You know, so it's, you know when you, uh, where I used to work, um, they had a Manhattan. And if they made it right, like they were supposed to, like you, 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 they had the, you had your, your, uh, your, um, your, your whiskey was a bourbon and your um, uh, vermouth um, mm -hmm. on the top. And then you had uh, orange and cherry in the middle. It was like the, it was a, um, uh, a cold, a cold uh, coffee thing. Right. And actually, some somebody has it around here somewhere. Uh, uh, some bar has it here. And then you know the rest of it. So it drips in there. It takes about an hour for all that to happen, and then it, make, it basically makes it yeah, for you. Perfect. And that is great when it's made. But if, if it's just made right then and there, it, mm -hmm. the, the flavors haven't integrated. So that Negroni was the best Negroni I've ever had. Um, mm. This in a Negroni, um, um, I think would really, I, I, I think it would be, a, it's, I think it'd be, it's, to me it's smoother than just a, a straight regular old gin, mm -hmm. you know. And I also believe that because of the flavor profile is more, um, uh, it's more deep because mm -hmm. you have also have this graininess component in there as well. Yeah. So you've got part of the botanical side of things and you've got the graininess. And that works really well against the Campari and the vermouth. It, yeah. it really holds its ground, yeah. if you will. Um, uh, and it just adds a layer to it. For me personally, it adds a layer to to yeah. to to the drink. Uh, this this has been super educational. You know, I've just had a master class in, in <laughs> Geneva. So I mean, um, and, and that, that's why I like to do interviews because I, I get like master classes of every in, anywhere I go. Um, obviously, it's the most I've ever had. Um, I've, it was a great wide ranging uh, uh, of styles. Um, I, I would say I probably like this one the best, um, just because I think it, it speaks to my whiskey. Which one? My yeah. the the um, the old style was this one here. Uh, the copper bottle. Yeah, yeah the from, copper bottle from uh, the bar. Um, this is probably the one I like the best. Um, I like all of them, um, but this one I think is just because it's kind of like that. That crutch of like the whiskey sides because I do I do enjoy bourbons and whiskeys, mm -hmm. but um, because of you know it's you know close cousins with with gin and the botanical side. I mean everything in, on here has been has been really nice and educational and it's got that extra bit that gin doesn't have. Right. You know and like I said, gin's very complicated spirit already mm -hmm. compared to other spirits. I think you know yeah. um, and I think just this kind of just takes it just up an another notch. Um, and uh, it's it's very nice, you know. And, a lot and, to discover. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, I learned it. I learned a ton. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and to be honest, I mean, we didn't leave you give. I mean, it was the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I could go on for days about Geneva, bet, about the yeah. history and everything behind it, and. Um, but that's maybe for another show. Yeah, that's maybe for another time, right? Yeah. I mean, all these 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 brands they Yeah, have we haven't even separate. delved into the brands and and. I mean, the huge variations. I yeah. think there are a few hundred different brands and styles and um, uh, tastes to dis yeah, yeah. discover. Well, um, I I I think we can wrap this up. Um, I, I want to thank both of you for spending cool. some time with me, wow. uh, introducing me to a really cool category that I really didn't. I mean, I've studied what what this is, but the last time I really like looked at the Wikipedia entry, which yeah. is basically my, m most of my knowledge on it, yeah. was a while ago. So reminding me about the malt and all everything else about it mm -hmm. um, was highly educational yeah. um, and. Uh, I really appreciate you spending some time with me and kind of going through this and, and a nice little tasting, kind of guided tasting to kind of introduce me to it. Um, 
do you have anything else you want to talk about? No, I mean, in, in the end, I mean, um, uh, on our on our website, it's the World of Geneva. World of Geneva. Okay. Uh, yeah. You can find a lot of information also about uh, about Geneva. Clearly, also if you're going to on the internet and you will type in Geneva or history of Geneva or whatever it is. I mean, just, it will just you got lots and lots of um, information which you can find there, uh, up to the nitty gritty about. Uh, the whole transfer into gin and what happened and everything yeah um so there's a lot of information to find so if you want to have more if you want to check out more details about geneva definitely uh, go there as well um and yeah i mean great that that you took the time to to uh to um have a chat with us about uh, geneva and yeah. hopefully we will uh we will be seeing more genevers uh, in the bars and also uh, in front of the customer uh, more often yeah in the coming time in the period very nice um well folks that's, that's going to do it for this episode as always you can click the links above to friend me up uh, i'll have links below for everything uh as far as uh, the world of geneva and um i'll get the i'll get all the brands uh links and uh, so you can check them out um and uh yeah uh, that's going to do it and uh, thanks for, thanks for stopping by we'll see everyone again next time